Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another episode of This Studio. My name is Adam, and it's time for yet another segment of Let's Watch. Thank you so much to my studio VIPs, Zero Gravity Cushion, Robert Utomo, Will Flitter, Mallet Lab, Bradley Crowley, Ryan Carlisle, Rudolph Kralik, Austin Bench, Greg Harris, Arthur Lipner, and Scott Rader. Thank you so much for your continued support. And today's featured studio artist is Marimba Maurice. Thank you so much for your continued support. And if you'd like to become a studio VIP or a studio artist, you can go to patreon.com forward slash Adam Tan or you can click over here. Welcome back to the show once again. I hope you've been well. And yes, today we are doing yet another Let's Watch! Yes, Let's Watch is a segment where we watch other people's videos of their performances or what they've been working on recently. I really like this segment a lot because I really like watching other people and it seems like you guys really like watching other people too. So if you want to submit your video to this segment, you can go to adamtampercussion.com forward slash submit. We can take any video in this segment, anything related to percussion. It doesn't have to be marimba, it doesn't have to be my pieces, it can be anything. But yes, if you submitted something already, thank you so much. We have received a whole bunch of submissions. I really appreciate it so much. So yes, today's theme is all about virtuosity. So last week we watched some chamber ensemble performances. So I thought to mix it up this week, we will watch some virtuosic solo performances. One of them is going to be the Sejourné Marimba Concerto, and one of them is going to be Homo Balkanicus by Chufkovich. So let's kick things off with the concerto, which is submitted by Lennon Gust. And he said the piece is called Sojourn. And he says, I think this would be an awesome video for you to watch. This is my friend Ian from Wayzata High School in Minnesota. He's one of the better percussionists I know, and it would be fun to see you review his piece. I really like it when people say it's one of the better percussionists they know because it's gonna be good. Okay, so we got Ian Ko, who is playing on a Yamaha YM5100, and he's got an accompanist in the background on piano. Let's go. Whoa, that start. All right, all right. Oh, all right. All right, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. That's a really impressive start. I really enjoyed that, like, whooshing. But the mallets that are being used in this video sound pretty hard, especially towards the bottom. It sounds like it's like four medium mallets of some sort. I can't really see what it is. See how well that goes, because luckily I think most of the Sejourné stuff is in the middle to the top end of the marimba, but there are some bass notes as you can hear and they can be quite cracky. So let's keep watching. Good runs. Oh, oh. Oh, yeah. With that. Mallet up piece side. <laughs> I'm not sure if you can hear it, but you can kind of hear this very sort of sound. Now, I don't think it's his fault. I think it's the marimba. I think it's the string inside the bars. Maybe it's a bit loose or it's just wearing out or something. So maybe someone needs to restring that marimba. Honestly, the runs are sounding pretty awesome so far. So let's keep going. He's ready. He's ready. Attack! Oh, that was quite hard. His laterals are quite clean. Yeah, you can hear that bottom D. That oh. Yeah, like even if you just change the bottom mallet to a softer mallet, I think that would be better because you can hear it. It's just like a crack every time. His positioning is very good. I like that he's only moving when he needs to move. He's not shuffling around too much. He looks very in control too. 
He looks like he's enjoying himself too. Look at his face. <laughs> go. Nice. Look at that tilt. Slight tilt to get the soft edge on the mallet. Good tactics. Nice. Really nice rolls. Damn. I like that he's drawing out the rolls and altering the roll speed. Up, oh, a little bit of a stretch there. Nice. Seems like he raises his left hand a lot more than his right hand. Maybe he's left handed. See, like that. Oh, nice. That string noise is getting me though. <laughs> Every time I hear that string noise. Here we go, here we go. Get it. I noticed that he has to kind of bend over the marimba a lot like this. Maybe it's because the marimba is a little bit too low. Maybe it could be just a little bit higher. But I digress, he's, he's doing a great job so far. <laughs> his dynamic control too. He's not, he's not blasting this section out as much as he was with the other bits. Oh, he's building up. Here we go. See, he raises his left hand quite a lot. Like that. Oh, that was nice though. Wow. This guy's good. Nice. Good slowdown. Ah, the piano solo. Ah, he's, he's getting tired. <laughs> it's a tiring piece. He's doing so good at the moment. Come on, Ian. Finish this beast. Oh, there's the dab. That's, oh, that's crazy. That is so good, man. That is so satisfying to watch. Congratulations. Like seriously, playing this in high school, I'm assuming because you said it was in high school. That's, <laughs> the tempo was great. The accompanist did a really good job as well, keeping it very steady. The dynamic control was excellent. I really like that he, you know, stretched the time in the more flexible sections. Just a lot of good things happening there. The thing that stood out to me the most was the mallet choice. It felt really, really hard towards the bottom when he hit all those bass notes. 
A lot of players, when they play the Sejane Concerto, they really like to smash the bottom notes. And although he didn't really smash, smash it, he was using a pretty hard mallet. So you could hear that crack noise. So I understand that you need more articulate mallets for those lateral runs and stuff. So maybe if you swap out the bottom mallet, it would sound a lot bigger too, because you could use more weight and not have to worry about breaking the bar. So that's definitely something to consider. The mallets he's using look like double helixes, but whatever they are, they are like small and articulate and hard-ish. So gotta be careful with those. The second thing I noticed a lot was the string noise. Of course, that's not his fault at all. It's quite obvious, especially in concerto style performances where you're going for that sort of velocity and volume and you hear a lot of this Thirdly, a bit of a smaller thing. I think maybe, just maybe the marimba could be a little bit higher or maybe the stance can be adjusted a little bit so that he's more level with the instrument because I found that he tended to be going over the instrument like this a lot and then he had to sort of walk around like this. And it wasn't bad or anything, it just, maybe he could have a little bit more of an edge if the instrument was more of a favorable height. Honestly, I really like that he paid attention to small details too. Like for example, he's not using music. Of course you wouldn't use music in a concerto performance, but it makes a big difference. And another thing that I love is if you look at the marimba, you'll notice the wheels are all facing the same way. This is just one of those small things that a friend told me once makes a huge difference on stage because if you have the wheel all over the place the marimba just doesn't look neat but when they're all straight and clean like that it just looks like a proper concert performance so well done Ian seriously I stand you so the next piece we're going to listen to is called Homo Balkanicus by Nebojša Jovan Šivković and this piece was actually written for Kana Omori so I know some of you guys know Kana Omori but yes this piece is specifically written for her a little bit of trivia <laughs> but this particular video is submitted by Philip Karandif and he says, it's a video of my friend. He's one of the best marimbists in Russia, in my opinion. Best marimbist in Russia. Oh! So I want you to watch this. Thank you so much, Philip. I will definitely watch one of the best marimbists in Russia. Like, I love it when people say stuff like that. I get so excited. <laughs> okay, so here's the video. His name is Ivan Kokorin. And he is about to come out and play. You can see the marimba is again one of my favorite marimbas of all time. It's the Yamaha 6100, the Keiko Abe model. It just looks so good. Yeah. Respect. Respectful bowing before the performance. That's really, really, really good. All right, he's adjusting the height, checking that it's okay. It's all good. Getting the mallet set up away from the instrument. Very good. Whoa! <laughs> okay, wait, hold on. That was an awesome start. He just, he made it seem like he wasn't actually gonna start and then he just started. Here we go. Whoa! <laughs> All right. Whoa. It's so using like Chivkovich mallets? I think those are Chivkovich mallets. These are very fast rolls. That was very impressive. Oh, oh. Oh, I love that he put his head down when he did the dead stroke and it was like Phew. That is awesome. Phew. Okay. Yeah, nice deads. Look at his head. Look, he's feeling it. Oh, damn. 
Go back, go back, go back. Look at that run. That's madness. That's madness. This guy really knows how to control his playing. Like, just a lot of control. I will say, his balance do sound a little bit hard. A little bit hard towards the bottom as well. I don't know whether that's because of the recording, but it looks like he's using four of the same, so... Hmm. But the playing is really good. Whoa! He's keeping a really good, steady pulse as well. Not rushing at all. That's not even breaking a sweat. <laughs> oh, that's wild, man. This is a bit more of a calm section. So effortless, so effortless, it's like Wow Wow, 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 wow Nice rolls Okay, before he keeps going, I will say at this point I'm thoroughly impressed by the technicality and the virtuosity. A lot of people learn Chivkovich's pieces like Iliash and this one, and they tend to play it like super fast because it sounds exciting, but they don't get the notes right. And it sounds really like convoluted and a little bit crunched up. Like if you were to get a bucket of rice and just kind of smash it to pieces, it kind of sounds like that. <laughs> this is one of the few examples where it seems like Ivan has taken the music to a molecular level and has practiced it a lot to get the note runs so fluid and so dynamic without having to really try. It doesn't really look like he's like working very hard to get those runs, they just sort of come out. I will say at this point, although it may be because of the recording, it does sound quite hard. Like the mallets themselves look like Chifkovich's light blue mallets, which I used to have a set of those and they were quite rock hard and he's going pretty hard as well. He's raising them all the way up to here and it's going bang, bang, bang. And it's, it's impressive, but it is also very, very loud and very harsh. So I don't know what it would sound like in person, but I have a feeling that this is potentially marimba cracking material as well. We'll talk about that a bit more after the video is finished, but for now, let's just keep basking in how virtuosic these runs are. All right, it's coming back, back to the A theme. Now, despite the fact he played loud at the previous section, he does know how to control his softer dynamics too. So it's not all just loud, which is nice. The runs are so clean. I love that. Bam. And then he's like, whoo. He does like a big exhale, looks around himself. And he's like, I did it. 
I did it, everyone. That's probably the craziest performance we've had on this segment so far. That's insane. Honestly, I mean, you don't really need my applause. You got so much in the video, but that is a crazy performance. Like, that is just crazy. Crazy. Accuracy sounds very, very high. It didn't sound like it was rushing at all. It sounded very constant. So just the whole thing sounded very, very controlled, but he was also giving it a lot of energy. I really enjoyed the performance aspect of it. It really was quite showy. He did a few nice big gestures and then he really showed that he was enjoying the pulse and it just felt like something that you could sit there and enjoy watching. So yeah, really overall, it's a really good performance and you could definitely win certain competitions around the world like that. However, I do believe there is a trend at the moment with especially pieces like Chivkovich's, which are very groovy and have a lot of bass notes that go They tend to be very loud. They tend to be at like 900% volume and a lot of the people, they find it to be very impressive. So they think, okay, if I play it louder, it's going to be like, whoa. I feel like that philosophy is okay when you're talking about things like drum set or concert toms or multi-percussion solos. You can sort of just go ham and it sounds good. You know, it sounds strong. It sounds full of character. But marimba, I feel like it's different. I don't think marimba is designed to be an instrument where you just hit it as hard as you can. It's not a drum. <laughs> And there's only so much sound that a single bar can produce. And I felt like this guy was trying to go beyond that line. And he's using super heavy Chivkovich mallets, which are also rock hard at that hardness, the light blue hardness. And he's going like, bam, bam, bam. It might sound impressive to certain audiences as well, but it's just very loud. And I think if I owned that marimba, I'd be almost upset because I feel like all those bars would be cracked by the end of this performance. I think a change of mallets would do a huge amount of good for this performance. Can you imagine if he played it with like a graduated set of warmer, sort of bigger headed mallets and he sort of used the natural weight to hit all of these loud notes and it was filled with warmth and you could hear the fundamental first as opposed to this sort of sound. Soon you're gonna have a guy on a five octave on the top of Mount Everest going like bam, bam, bam. It makes me go wow. But I don't know if it's musical. So Ivan, if you're watching, I have to say you are definitely a very, very good player. You have very good technique. You have very good skills. You have also got musicality as well. You know when to make the volume up and you know when to make it down. But I reckon if you just change the mallets and you just made the overall volume of the piece just go down like that, it would make a huge difference. And it would take it from being like a chop burning session to a really wholesome, impressive musical experience. But yeah, I would love to know what you guys think. Let me know down in the comments below. Do you think people should not use such hard mallets on marimbas? Do you think there is a limit to how much is too much? Let me know in the comments below because I think this is a really interesting discussion point for a lot of people. And it's just also different with different countries. Like some countries like to have really loud marimba playing and some countries like to have really warm, soft marimba playing. So. Let me know what you think. Anyway, if you enjoyed today's video, please give me a thumbs up. Thank you so much to all the people who submitted today's videos and all the other Let's Watch videos. Again, if you'd like to submit a video to this segment, you go to adamtampercussion.com forward slash submit, fill in the form, and we will feature it on the next episode of Let's Watch. And if you'd like to see more content, please hit that red subscribe button below to keep up with my uploads. We're almost at 15K subscribers. And I don't just make Let's Watch videos watching other people play. I also make technique talks about technique. I review stuff on the show. You can see behind me, that's my Izzy Marimba. Yeah, there's just a lot of fun stuff on this channel. So if you'd like to see more, hit that red subscribe button below. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this week and I'll see you guys next week for another episode of The Studio. Good night. <laughs>